Cozy Whispers. Uh, this is my first video, so if it's strange, I apologize. I've been uh, an avid listener of the ASMR Whisper community for almost, oh my gosh, three years. And so I finally decided that it was time to contribute to the community that has given, you know, a lot of people peace, you know, just a lot of good things. So, um, I've decided to take the easy route for a first video and read from one of my favorite books because I know personally that I love hearing stories and especially in a soft-spoken voice that helps me go straight to, straight to sleep. So, I'm going to be doing a whisper reading of maybe the first chapter or two of one of my favorite books called The Princess Tales by Gail Carson Levine. And as you can tell, it's kind of beaten up. I, I loved it and read it a lot. So, um, it's still one of my favorite books. I still think it's hilarious. So, let me just set you down. Shoemaker said that Trudy was a hard worker, so Sam hired 
housekeeper, but she took the job. As soon as Trudy walked in the door, Lorelai ran to her, stumbled, and fell into Trudy's arms. Dear Trudy, I'll do anything to help you, to the outer limits of my meager ability. Nobody had ever called Trudy dear before, so she thought this could be a pretty cushy spot, even if she understood only one in ten that the last said. But then again, if the girl wanted to help, why were there dirty dishes piled up as high as a horse's rear end? Trudy shrugged and bumped water into the sink. Here, lass, you can start on these. Oh, good. Lorelai took the soap and started to scrub a plate. Trudy looked around for a mop. Oh, dear, Lorelai said. What's amiss? Lorelai raised her arms out of the soapy water. Trudy was horrified. The girl's arms and hands were covered with a bright red rash. Does this happen whenever you wash a dish? Trudy asked. I, I don't know. I've never washed one before. Never washed a dish? Her poor dead mother had let her get away with that. Had the woman mistaken her daughter for a princess? Mother gave the unguents and the bandages in the hutch, Lorelai said. Trudy opened the hutch door. There were enough potions and herbs and simples to set up shop as a wise woman. That one, there, Lorelai pointed to a big jar. Trudy spread the salve over Lorelai's rash. It has to be wrapped in clean linen, Lorelai pointed again. Trudy wrapped up Lorelai's arms three times. The first time, the bandages were too tight. The next time, they were too loose. An hour passed before Lorelai said that they were just right. At last, Trudy thought, her majesty is satisfied. The dressing has to be chained every two hours, Lorelai said. I'm sorry to be such a bother. Trudy frowned. It wasn't exactly her highness's fault, but over an hour had gone by and the dishes were still dirty. The floor hadn't been mopped and there was a mountain of laundry in the basket. She'd be working half the night to get it all done. Trudy worked half the night and that night and every night. For a month, she took off bandages and put Anne on bandages. When the rash was gone, Lorelai offered to help again. Trudy hadn't been able to do any spinning because of all the bandaging. Surely her thought, her majesty can't come to grief spinning. Can you help me with the spinning? Lorelai smiled happily. Gussie had never led her near the spinning wheel. She knew exactly what to do, though, because she'd watched her mother so often. She sat down at the wheel and got started. Trudy nodded. There, she began to dust. Oh, dear. Trudy turned around. Lorelai had stabbed herself in the hand with a spindle, and blood was pouring onto the cottage's wooden floor. Trudy ran for the bandages. While Trudy bandaged her, Lorelai apologized at least a thousand times. After that, Trudy spent an hour scrubbing blood off the wooden floor and was wondering what the bundling ninny was good for. Well, not that much, Trudy soon discovered. Lorelai could hang laundry on the line, and she could make a bed neatly. But the only thing she was really good at was embroidery. And Trudy had no need for embroidery. What she needed was to scream long and loud. Every day, Trudy got madder and madder. While she watched, washed Lorelai's satin sheets, her ladyship would be sitting at her ease, embroidering by the window. As Trudy needed Lorelai's special millet buckwheat bread, the lazy thing would be lying in bed because her poor little throat hurt, or her poor, poor little left eyebrow, or her poor little big toe. Then came the joyous moment when Trudy thought of doing Lorelai in, cooking her highness's goose, rubbing her pampered self, O-U-D, out. Trudy started whistling. Lorelai looked up from embroidering the outline of a potato on one of Sam's breeches. She smiled. I'm so glad you're happy here, Trudy. Oh, I am, lass. I am. Happier every minute. Chapter 3 It was lunchtime in the nearby court of the king and queen of Biddle. Queen, queen Hermione rang her little bell to let the royal servants know that they could bring out the first course. The chief royal lunchtime serving maid carried a platter heaped with crab cakes into the royal dining room. King Humphrey helped himself to a tiny crab cake. Queen Hermione helped herself to a tiny crab cake. Prince Nicholas took a dozen or so crab cakes and started eating. King Humphrey tasted his crab cake. Queen Hermione tasted her crab cake. They shook their heads. Queen Hermione rang her bell again. The chief royal lunchtime serving maid stepped up to the royal table. I'm sorry, Queen Hermione said. These crab cakes taste a bit too fishy to me. We beg to differ or disagree, the king boomed. They're not fishy enough. Crab isn't a fish, Prince Nicholas said, chewing happily. My compliments to the chef. Please bring grapefruit instead, the queen said. The chief royal lunchtime serving maid removed the platter. On her way into the kitchen, she passed a counter where the royal 
such finicky rulers. My cousin Mabel doesn't fare half so well at the Earl of Bildenew's castle. The Earl and his family adore their food, adore their clothes, adore their furniture. She never gets anything. Back in snettering on Snokes, Lorelei ate her lunch of grapefruit, poached eggs, and dry toast, and patted her mouth with an embroidered napkin. Then she went out to hang embroidered laundry on the embroidered clothesline. While she worked, she thought about her mother and Trudy. Her mother had been so good to her, and Trudy was too. They both worked so hard. She hadn't helped her mother much, or Trudy, even though she'd always wanted to. Trudy looked tired sometimes, although she never complained. Gussie must have been tired too. But no matter how tired she might have been, her mother had always had, her mother had always had a kiss and a hug for Lorelai. And even if the hugs had made Lorelai a little black and blue, she would have given anything to have them back again. She wiped away a tear with the embroidered dough of Sam's hose. Prince Nicholas, riding by, saw the tear. He had gone out after lunch to get some fresh air. As soon as he had turned into the lane, he had seen Lorelai. She had looked pretty in the distance. As he got closer, she was still pretty. Not a raving beauty, but definitely pretty. Light brown hair. Ordinary color, but thick and wavy. Nose a little too big, but her eyes were big too. Enormous. And she had roses in her cheeks. You didn't see roses in the cheeks of the noble and stuck-up ladies at court. Then he saw she was crying. A corner of his heart that had never been touched before was touched. He leaped off his steed. Maiden, he cried. You weep. Lorelei turned and knocked over the laundry basket. Embroidered petticoats and tunics and bodices dance across the small muddy yard. Prince Nicholas vaulted over the low fence and helped Lorelei gather up the wash. He picked up one of Sam's shirts, embroidered with three-legged stools. The stitchery was masterful. But why three-legged stools? He asked, Maiden, why were you crying? crying? Perhaps I can be of some service. Lorelai blushed. He wasn't that handsome, but there was something regal about him. Who was he? I, I was missing my mother, kind sir. Your mother is... She died. Lorelai smiled bravely and gathered up the last item of laundry, a petticoat embroidered with tiny tea kettles. The poor maiden was an orphan, Nicholas thought, or half of one of her father was alive. You have my most sincere sympathy, maiden. He wanted to say more, but couldn't think of anything else. Lorelai smiled. Thank you, kind sir. He was nice. She had a wonderful smile. He found himself stammering. I am P P Prince Nicol Nicholas. He was a prince. She swept him a curtsy. I am Lorela. Inside, Trudy glanced up from her washtub. Look at her highness out there, she thought, passing the time with the young lord. Not for long, your ladyship. She hummed and danced a little jig. Not for long, hey ho, not for long, tra la. <laughs> Tales, not the, I mean, the Princess Test by Gail Carson Levine. Um, 